Hi, everybody. We're going to do a Premiere Pro introduction for reporters. And this way we can all be on the same page and we'll all have the basic skills we need. And what I need you to do first is to find our server that you'll see if you open up your yellow folder. Classwork is the name of the server. And then we have TV Studio. That's us. And in here, we've got a brand new folder called News Story Basic Editing. If you will copy that and then paste it onto your desktop, or you can just drag it onto your desktop like I just did, it's going to take a little bit because it's a big folder with clips in it. Meanwhile, the reason we're doing this is because Premiere Pro and every editing that I know of, any software that edits video, needs to have all of the clips and the footage and the audio and the stills all together in the same place for it to function efficiently. And if you don't want your uh, project to lag while you're editing, this is the best way to do it. Always on your local computer. When we're done and we export, then we can move all this stuff somewhere else. You don't always have to keep everything on your local, but you do need to move it there to get started. While you're waiting for that to copy over, go ahead and open up Premiere Pro, and we're going to get a project going. So Adobe Premiere Pro, you should be able to search for that. And it does take a while to load, too, as a matter of fact. All right, let's start a new project. And this one we're just going to call New Story Practice, because that's what we're doing, practicing some editing. And here's the most important piece, the location. And that is exactly what we just set up. It is the location on your desktop in the folder called New Story Basic Editing. So go ahead and select that folder and make sure that's where your project file is going to go. Now I was talking about puzzle pieces and how Premiere needs to have all those clips and everything in the same place. Click on Scratch Disks and you'll kind of get the idea. Every time you're editing in Premiere and it shows you any of the rendering that you've done, any of those audio clips, anything on a timeline, it all creates separate files for that. Those should all be in the same place. By default, wherever you put your project file, that is where these scratch disks will go. So it makes it much easier for it to grab all that and put it together just like a puzzle. Video and audio we are leaving because they are digital content and those are done in timecode and in samples. And finally, and most importantly, HDV. So high definition, almost everything. I can't think of a phone now or a camera or anything that doesn't use HD, which means anything with a resolution horizontally larger than 1080p. And I'm looking at what's called the workspace. There are four panels here. One of them is the project panel. That's in the lower left. And that's where your media clips will be imported. The next one is the source panel. And this is where you will look at your media clips and do a little editing. This is the program panel. And you'll see as you create on the timeline all of your video right up here. And of course, followed by the timeline down lower. If yours doesn't look exactly like mine, just be careful that you haven't got one of the other workspace um, setups pressed up top. All right. We need to bring in a clip to get started. And so down in the lower left where it says import media, just double click. And you probably will start in this folder that's the news story. Open the A roll by double clicking. And here's a clip called reporter at crime scene. Let's go ahead and open that and bring it in. Um, this is a little bit hard to see down here, but there is a thumbnail of the clip. And as we get more, they will be listed down here. If you have trouble um, and you want more space, each of these black lines, these dividers between the panels can be moved. So if I need a little more space to see something, I can. And then if I want to just list these in, um, with text rather than a thumbnail. I can click on the different icons down here. This is icon view. Let's go ahead and bring in the rest of our clips. I am moving my project panel up so I can see. Double click. And in the B-roll folder, 
I want you to highlight all four of those clips and choose open and they'll bring in all four of those. I can see them here in my project panel. All right, we're gonna get going right away with our clip with this news reporter. So please click and drag it up to the source panel and then I would like you to preview it, to play it and listen to everything she says. I'll give you time for that. So you've probably heard that um, she's sort of in the this middle. has been discovered. The victim. Uh, she's sort of in the middle of a broadcast and and um, we're going to do a little bit of, of quick edits here. Okay. So I want to get to the, she, she starts on the middle of a sentence, so I want to get to the beginning of the first full sentence. This has been discovered. So right after the word discovered, I am going to forward it to that point, and that happens to be at one second and one frame. That's what you see here, one and then O1. Oh, um, I just used my space bar to start and stop, and when you're in the source pane, that, that will do just fine, the, the start and stop. All right, to make an endpoint, um, we're going to use the keyboard shortcut I, and that's going to mark where we want our video clip to start. So it's going to start on her complete sentence, and then i got to listen to where I want it to end. New York's Upper West Side. And we're going to stop on the word west side. And to get an out point, we're going to click O for out. So if you remember that, again, I is for in, O is for out. Um, we're doing what is known as three-point editing. So right now I've done the two points that we need. The third point is the in point on the timeline. And since this is the first time we're using this clip, we are simply going to click and drag it in the end point will be right at the beginning at zero seconds, zero frames. And moving right along, we are going to continue with our editing. This time I want you to find bystander interview number two over here in the project panel and click and drag it up to the source. We're going to cut off her question because, again, I've talked to you a little bit about how the reporter isn't the story, so questions don't always have to be there. Right here is the endpoint at 4 and 13 frames, so I'm going to click I, and we're going to zip all the way to the end to right about where he says this. Well, maybe that's it. I think maybe where he says the same thing. Right where he says the same thing is out. Click and drag it to the timeline. Now I didn't put it right next to. I can I can slide it over if I want, but I didn't put it right next to the previous clip because I wanted to show you that if you really want to edit on the timeline, you can certainly um, find these red arrows that will clip off pieces and will um, increase what's there as well. So if you need to fine tune any of your editing that you did the rough cut over in the source panel, you can do that. And, and if I use the zoom in feature, um, one of the nice things is you can see the wave file a little bit. I usually like to um, drag it out a little bit bigger so I can see it even more. And that helps you determine where they're speaking and where they're not. But um, let's go with what we have. There we go. It's going to clip right in and snap right together. So let's see what our cut looks like here on the timeline. We're going to use the playhead. Um, I click it up here in the timeline at right about four or something. For West Side. Okay. So that's right where he started talking. Maybe a little bit early, but it's fine. Looking good. All right, time for another clip. Let's go get bystander interview number one and drag it on up to the source panel. And why don't you preview that one? How about you, Are you surprised? Call the National Guard. We got to get out of here. Oh my God, you don't know. You don't. All right. This interviewee is, shall we say, excited about what has happened in this crime scene and. Um, as a editor, I would like to draw that excitement into my story early on rather than wait. Um, and so I would like to put it before the other interview because the other interview was eh, less exciting. 
So let's get this clipped up here in the source panel, um, where he says, Call the National Guard, we gotta get out of here. Where he says, we gotta get out of here. Let's clip it right where he says, we gotta get out of here. Let's put I for the input. And then he says it again, great emphasis. We gotta get out of here. All right, he says, we gotta get out of here twice. And that's my input and my output. So I could just drag down this clip and see what would happen if I dropped it onto my timeline in between the two. It is set default to overwrite whatever you put it on top of. So it's overwritten some of the other uh, interview. Let's try that again. And now I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to hold the control key down at the same time as dragging and dropping. That inserts that clip in between two other clips. So in the sequence, they're going to have the full clip that we edited in the source panel. And we could watch this. Let's use the space bar. West side. Why do we got to get out of here? Oh my God, you don't know. You don't understand. This it's working great. All right. We have one other clip we're going to work with today, and that is our crime scene tape clip. So again, over in the project panel, click and drag it up to the source panel. And you can preview this. You'll realize right away it doesn't have any audio. That is on purpose because we want this one to be just a cutaway. And I think we're going to use about five seconds of cutaway. So let's do our endpoint at the beginning. I click I. And I'm going to drag the playhead over to about five seconds. And I'm going to click O. And that's going to give us enough of that, that drama. We're going to put this, believe it or not, you're going to be surprised, right over this reporter when she asks another question. And I think that works out really well um, because she turns her head away. So we're going to try to stick it right in our timeline where I've put the playhead. Now I could, again, drag and drop. And what I get is both audio and video. And yes, it would work, but it's probably not the best option. If you remove audio, in fact, look at this track right here, the audio one. If I turn audio one off, turn audio one off, and I click and drag, the only thing I get is video. Yes, I can leave it on that track if you wish. That works fine. There's one other way to deal with inserting in between on the playhead. And this one's a keyboard shortcut. If you use the period on the keyboard, and I'm going to show you that one more time, the period on the keyboard will insert any clip that is here onto your timeline. It will cut out and override what is the video piece. So, so let me show you that um, so you understand what I'm saying. Oopsie. So you understand. I'm going to play this. You never think you'll see it. Okay. Do you think it's related to the other crimes that have been happening in New York? Okay, we finished the cutaway. It gave some visual interest. And the only thing left is the reporter sign-off, which is in the first clip called Reporter at Crime Scene. I'm going to leave that one for you to go ahead and add to the timeline that last little bit where she signs off. And you will complete this project. You can save it as a project file. That is fine. Make sure you control S at the end. And that's it for tutorial one. Whew.